and we will be good to go. Bear with me for just a moment. Perfect. All right. So um, first off, I wanted to say thank you guys for the invitation um, to ISET. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to come in and talk to you guys about Siena Heights University and about our programs. Um, just as a little bit of a background about me, what I've done, uh, other than what Lisa had mentioned, um, I've actually talked at ASSET before um, for their annual conference that just happened recently, I believe it was August. Um, we had a booth out there, Siena Heights had a booth for the virtual, for the virtual conference. Um, also, we are located in Michigan, so MSET is our branch, and I have uh, attended some of the MSET conferences, so I'm glad to, uh, to be invited to ISET. Thank you guys so much. Um, just a little bit more about me, um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a feeler. Right now, due to the pandemic, I am working from home. You guys can see my wife's lovely decorations. Um, I also have a puppy who is a little bit over a year old, and he's walking back and forth right now. So I'm going to apologize right now on the off chance that he speaks up and, and starts to get a little bit uh, out of hand. I'm going to apologize right now for that. Um, but the good news is, is that since I'm talking, uh, hopefully this breaks up the day for you guys a little bit. I know 10 a.m. might be a little bit early to some. Um, and so just listening to, to Dr. Raskin's presentation before mine, this is going to be much easier. You guys aren't going to have to learn anything. Um, essentially, just listen to me, and I should answer most, if not all, of your questions. So, um, Also, the, the, the neuro program at Siena Heights uh, we've had this for a number of years, even before I started working at Siena Heights, and I believe our first graduate was in 2007 or 2008 um, with their bachelor's degree. And so essentially what, what we wanted to do was find some sort of niche that needed to be filled. And so um, starting last year, I believe it was July or August of last year, I had this idea to um, try and put together a bachelor's degree program for people such as yourselves who have a number of credentials that are interested in, uh, you know, continuing their education, whether it be at the bachelor's or master's level. Um, and so we helped develop this program, myself and, and a number of others, um, a couple of rock star people on my team helped us put together this program for people just like you guys so we could offer you as much credit as possible, uh, make your stay as basically as painless as possible. Um, and because of that, since this program has started, I am the advisor over the entire thing. So any student across the U.S. or even outside for that matter interested in our neurodiagnostic bachelor's degree program they come and talk to me. So I'm very familiar with the higher education side of things. I'm very familiar with how uh, credit hours work and, and knowing what it would take to get a student to that next step in their career. And so at the end of this presentation, you're gonna see um, that I have an email and a phone number. Uh, feel free to reach out at any time. I can answer any of your questions uh, or if you would like to have more of a one-on-one -on -one meeting, I would be more than happy to do that. So let me shut up. Let's get into this presentation uh, without further ado. So welcome to the Bachelor's of Applied Science program. Um, this bachelor's degree is indeed an applied science degree. And so for people that don't know what an applied science degree is, um, oh, I'm sorry, that was the next slide. Put a pen in that. I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, a little bit more about Siena Heights University. We were founded in 1919 by the Adrian Dominican Sisters. We are an accredited institution uh, by the North Central Association and HLC, which is the Higher Learning Commission. Um, our main campus is in Adrian, Michigan. So for those of you who um, like to know things in like time and distance and things like that, um, I actually looked up right before I got on this how far Fort Wayne, Indiana was from our main campus in Adrian, and it's only about an hour and 50 minutes away. So. We're not too far from you guys, um, but that is where our main campus is located. We do have eight additional locations. 
um, that you can see on the map, Benton Harbor, Kalamazoo, Battle Creek. Lansing is actually where I work. Um, that's where my office pre-COVID is based out of uh, when I'm not working from home. So people can come in and meet with me face to face. Um, obviously, since this has happened, a lot of things have changed. Uh, but then we have a few other sites that you can see. I'm not necessarily going to go through all of them. Um, we offer students the ability to complete uh, programs either entirely online, grounded, or they can mix and match. Um, so for our main campus students, they're more the traditional college students that come in at usually between 18 and 20 years old. They attend campus. We have dorms there. Um, they stay, but for all of these other eight sites, they're all degree completion centers, which I can explain a little bit more here in a second. Um, but going back to the Bachelors of Applied Science, this is just a, uh, a little bit of a snippet from our flyer. Um, the Bachelors of Applied Science degree is a career-oriented degree. Um, it's designed for people with a specific skill set. So um, those who are welders, for example, would qualify as a Bachelors of Applied Science candidate. Um, neurodiagnostic technology, those students also qualify as an Applied Science degree. Uh, and what that means is that you actually have some sort of skill, trade, something that you're working for, and, and therefore that's what the, the degree is in. Um, don't mind the picture. I definitely wanted to take it when they told me, um, but we will move on very quickly. All right, so what to expect? All right, so Siena Heights University, there's a few things that I want to get into before I really start talking about our program, what it can do for you, things like that. Uh, one thing that I hear a lot from students and, and that I've found is important for them to know is, are we real? Are we just an online university? What else do we have going for us? So. Uh, we are a member of the NAIA, which is the, Nas the National Association uh, of Intercollegiate Athletes. We have a football team, we have a baseball team, basketball team. Uh, we actually have an esports team um, that was recently designed, I believe, like a year ago. Um, we do have, like I said earlier, the main campus, we have dorms. So we're not just an online option for students, we're a real university. And a lot of people like that, they want to know what they're getting into when it comes to college, since it is expensive and time consuming, is going to be worthwhile. So um, out of our students at our main campus, I believe 70% of them are student athletes. Um, so we have a very large population of students who do partake in extracurricular activities. Um, but um, let's get into this a little bit more. Um, what to expect if you're interested in our program, we have something that's essentially like a one-stop shop. So as I mentioned earlier, I am the advisor for the program. So any questions that any students have about this program, as far as will classes and, and credits transfer in, how many classes will I have to take? What would it look like if I wanted to, you know, complete my degree within a year and a half? They can come to me. So traditionally at universities and colleges, they have two separate people. They have recruiters and then they have advisors. I, luckily, um, tend to be both. So obviously I'm doing things like this to where I can reach out to students. Um, but then if you, at the end of this, if you do decide to pursue our program, I would be the one helping you through it every step of the way. Um, I would register you for classes. I would send you your degree plan. I would accept you. Uh, when it comes time for graduation, I will be there uh, to, to help you um, on that day walk across the stage if you decide to do it in person. So our one-stop shop with the advisor motto is a little bit um, out there because it doesn't happen a lot. Usually you, you get multiple people. Um, and even then, sometimes, you know, you could go to a, a community college and every time you go in, you see a different advisor. So uh, luckily you're stuck with me. Hopefully you don't mind. But... Um, if you have any questions, reach out. But at Siena, we have something that's called a three plus one program. So for those of you that don't know uh, what that means, essentially what that means is that if a bachelor's degree is four years, the first three years worth of school you can do elsewhere, whether it's through community college, uh, another college or institution, uh, vocational school, um, work experience, any of that, first three years of education uh, can be transferred into our program 
usually leaving students with around one year to complete our bachelor's degree. So in numerical values, for those of you that are number people like me, um, a bachelor's degree is traditionally 120 credit hours. So if you can do your first three years elsewhere, we're looking for students to have right around 90 credits to transfer in, which will leave them with a minimum of 30 credits to take with us, uh, which is the equivalent of 10 classes to complete their degree, barring that you complete things such as general education courses, which I'll get into here in a minute. Um, so 90 is that magic number. 90 is what we're looking for students to have around. Um, you'll see here in the next couple of slides, it's quite easy to get up to the 90. I've had a number of students in this program that have actually never stepped foot inside a college and have came in with 86, 87 credits above 90. Um, so it is indeed achievable. But the three plus one program, what makes it unique and what makes it interesting is the fact that if you can do three years of your education elsewhere and transfer it into Siena, what that's gonna ultimately do for you is it's going to keep the cost as low as possible. Um, so a lot of times when I, <laughs> I'm sorry, my dog, uh, a lot of times when I advise students, uh, I will tell them to go and if they say, for example, they had 60 credit hours and they wanted to get up to the 90, I might advise them to do an additional 30 credits elsewhere, or we will look at different options to get their credits up before they transfer to us. Uh, being that we are a university, our credit hour is higher than that of a community college. So three plus one, doing as many classes as you can elsewhere and transferring them in is going to be helpful for cost reasons, if nothing else. Um, so that's a little bit about the three plus one program, how it's structured. Even if students don't have 90, they can transfer into our program. It's just 90 is that magic number. At Siena Heights, we have something that's called a residency requirement, which means in order for our name to be on a degree for the student, um, they have to complete at least 30 credit hours with us. So 90 is that maximum amount of classes, uh, or excuse me, credit hours that you can transfer in. Um, so with that being said, like I said, the usual completion time is one year, which is the equivalent of three semesters. Um, and all of our classes that you would have to take are going to be seven week long courses. Now, a lot of people find this attractive. A lot of people really like this idea because knowing and working with you guys for as long as I have, um, your schedules are, are different um, than the average student. You don't necessarily know um, how long you're going to be working some days and if it's going to stay consistent. So what we have is we have two sessions to each semester. So we have a fall one and a fall two, a winter one, winter two, summer one, summer two. So just as an example, um, to give you guys a little bit of background and to show you what that would look like is our fall one semester at Siena started August 31st and it goes until October 16th. And then our students have a week break and then our fall two semester starts October 26th and goes until December 13th. So some of you might be saying, why does this matter? Why are you pointing this out? I wanna show you what this would look like. So if you're attending a regular institution community college and say you're enrolled in a composition class, chances are that comp class is gonna be going from August until December. Whereas at Siena, that class would only be going from August until mid-October. So this is important for a few reasons other than the flexibility and, and the ability to work it with your schedule. Um, having the seven week classes means it's easier for students to attend and complete their degree than they might have thought previously. Because if you planned on going to school for a degree, for your bachelor's for example, and if you planned on being a part-time student, we'll say, a part-time student is six credit hours, which is usually two courses. So if you were doing two classes somewhere else, those two classes would be going on simultaneously from August until December. Whereas at Siena, one of your classes would be from August until mid-October, then you would have a week break, and then your second class would be from late October until December. So the seven-week courses, I think I've hit the nail on the head enough with that. I just want you guys to know, if you were to come into our program, if you were interested, all of our classes are formatted this way. And again, as I mentioned, uh, it is flexible and this can be done entirely online. Another question that I get a lot is, is there synchronistic components to the classes? Meaning, am I gonna have to punch on Wednesdays from six to nine? The answer is absolutely not. 
being that it is an online class, what that means is you will get like a due date from your professor saying this assignment's due at Wednesday at 11.59 p.m. Um, on Wednesday night. And then you go in on your own time whenever you have it and can complete that assignment and turn it in for that due date. So it is entirely online. You can absolutely do this while you're still in Indiana, um, enjoying a little bit of the warmer weather than we get here in Michigan, um, but you can do it entirely online. So um, also before I move on, at Siena, I actually advise over a variety of programs. This one is by far my favorite, and I, I talk to students more often through this program than anything else, hands down. Um, but we also have master's degree options for students. So if you've listened to the first part of this presentation and you've thought to yourself, Logan's been rambling for 20 minutes, I already have a bachelor's degree, what does this apply to me? If you've been thinking about a master's, we have those options as well. Traditionally, the top two master's programs that I, that I see most often when talking to uh, my students is either a master's in higher education leadership, which we offer, and those are traditionally for the people who are interested in getting into teaching some sort of class in you know, the, the neurodiagnostic field. Uh, whether it be at, you know, one of these events, such, you know, through a continuing education um, sort of thing, or whether it be at an actual college or even some vocational programs. Um, but the higher education leadership is traditionally for people who are wanting to go, in, go into this and, and teach. The other option is a healthcare leadership uh, master's degree. Uh, and we have a few more, but these are the two most popular. And these are for the people who actually want to stay in the field, um, have their masters say something, you know, that shows that they're in the health field and that they're still interested in pursuing a career in this and just wanted that master's tag, whether it be for a promotion, pay, what have you. Um, so we do offer both. This program that I'm going to be talking about is a bachelor's program. Uh, but just know that if you have that and you would look and, and like to look for master's programs, we also have those as well. So um, let's move on from this. All right, so let's talk about credit. I've said this a number of times. Uh, some of you might be thinking, how do I earn credit? What counts for credit? I got it right here. This is the holy grail for you. So as far as traditional credit goes, obviously there's the community college credit or additional uh, college credit, whether it's a community college or not. Um, CLEP testing, um, AP courses through high school, so if you had taken like an AP biology or whatever, um, those a lot of times we can use as credit or technical or trade schools or programs. Um, so a lot of times there's accredited neuro programs that I see students come in with and absolutely those count for credits. Now the non-traditional credits, this took me quite some time to figure out. Uh, we had to go back through and we had to figure out um, through all of these certifications that you guys can have, and it is a lot, um, how many credit hours each one of them are gonna be worth for and things like that. So just as an example, say you didn't have any college and you had some of these certifications on the right, the um, REEG, the Evoked Potential, CNM, CLTM, Polysomnographic, uh, Nerve Conduction Studies, I see that a lot too. Every single one of those um, certifications will count towards credit. And if they're, they're all different. Uh, you can always ask me later on and I can tell you um, when it comes to you specifically how many we're looking at. Uh, but know that all of these options are ways for students to transfer in credit. So uh, where I mentioned earlier, the student that I had, the lady who had never stepped foot inside a college and came in with about 90 credits, she had, I believe, four or five of these certifications, and we were just able to keep piling on the credits for her, uh, making it to where I believe she only had 13 classes to complete her bachelor's degree, which for somebody never stepping foot inside college, never, never spending money, taking out student loans, um, that's quite impressive that you can complete that in a short amount of time as that. Uh, but also military credit uh, for those who have done uh, or served in the military and taken classes through there. We do offer credit for that as well, as far as advanced training, which I kind of went over a little bit with the certifications, um, and credit for employment, so work experience credit. So if a student, for example, has at least two years worth of work experience in the field, we can establish credit for that. 
Um, so these are just a variety of ways that we can take students who might not have either attended college or maybe they have and have some of these certifications and package this together in something that makes sense for them and makes sense for us uh, to help you pursue this program, okay? Um, other than credit, traditionally there's, there's three questions that I get. I get, how many credits am I gonna transfer in with? How long would it take me to complete the program? What's the cost? How do I, how do I offset that? So at Siena Heights University, there's a variety of ways that if cost is a factor for you, if cost is a limitation, we can bypass that. So we offer student loans, and some of you might have already taken them out, some of you might not have. As a note, uh, every student in the US at the undergraduate level, so bachelor's and, and lower, qualifies for the same amount of student loan money. And it's either, I believe it's $57,500 or $58,500 at the undergraduate level. So say you attended school before and you're thinking, Logan, I already took out $20,000, would I have enough? Yeah, you still have, you know, uh, the, the difference of 38,000 roughly. Um, but student loans is a popular option. A lot of times the students that I see in this program, when I talk about financial aid, um, you guys make a lot of money. And so um, a, a lot of times the free money, the Pell Grants, things like that, students know right off the bat that they're not going to qualify for it because them and their spouse make too much or they themselves make too much. Uh, but student loans is an option. Scholarships is another way to offset that cost. At Siena, we don't offer any specific scholarships to students in this program specifically. But if you're able to go out and accept and, and receive a third-party scholarship somewhere else for whatever reason, uh, whether it's writing an essay or because you're left-handed, they actually are out there. Um, but if you're able to receive those, we absolutely accept them. Uh, so feel free to do some research, look into those. I actually know a few sites so I can point students in the right direction for that. Um, then there's grants, the free money. Uh, tuition reimbursement is another way that students can help pay for college. Um, this time you have to be a little bit lucky for this. Uh, your employer has to agree to, usually they either pay in full and, and reimburse the student entirely or they'll pay a portion uh, based on the number of classes that they take within a year. Uh, but we do accept tuition reimbursement. Uh, if students are maxed out on their loans and, and you know, are at that 57000 amount and they're thinking, well, now what do I do? I, when I was younger, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was indecisive. Uh, I've maxed out on my loans. What are some other options? You can always look at third-party loans through banks, other lenders, credit unions, things like that a wealthy family member if you're fortunate. Um, but you can look at those as options to help pay for your courses. And then we also have payment plans that for those who plan on paying out of pocket, you can either set it up to where you do like a big bulk payment and pay the entirety of your tuition uh, for that semester, or you can set up payment plans where it's taken out every month, okay? Um, at Siena, we have something that's called the Siena Tuition Advantage. And what that means, it's the STA, what that means is that if a student was to start our program um, and not take any breaks, so not take a semester off, and if they can complete it within two years, two years or less, uh, the Siena Tuition Advantage means that students will not be um, liable to any credit hour changes, even if Siena did that. So as an example, right now, uh, I'll be straight up with you guys if you ever have any questions, but right now, we're 535 a credit hour. So say you started with us today. You said, Logan, he's a rock star. I loved what he was talking about. I want to get going. Great. 535 a credit hour. If you do not take a break, and if in a year it bumps up to $800 a credit hour, you're still locked in at that 535. So long as you don't take anything off um, and you can complete within two years, which is very hard not to, um, you're going to qualify for the Siena Tuition Advantage. So it's just a way to keep us competitive, uh, to keep students coming into this program, because ultimately my goal is not to, to drain money from anybody. My goal is to get you where you want to go with as little hassle as possible, whether it's financially, whether it's, you know, working with your schedule. So I will always do whatever works best for you, um, and then we can go from there. So 
that's a little bit about the cost um, and, and options for that if that is a concern for you. All right, so let's go into options. Logan, you've talked a lot about Sienna. What classes do I have to take? What do I have to do? So this is where it gets very unique, and this is where um, it could change from student to student because generally the student and myself set up their degree, which sounds a little bit backwards, but um, I can explain. So if a student transfers in with that magic 90 credit number that I mentioned earlier, and if they've completed all of their general education courses, which um, is like six credit hours of English composition, so usually two classes, uh, three to four credit hours of a lab science class. Um, just as a note, if you have any one of those registries that waives that requirement, so you don't even have to take it, but that's traditionally like biology or chemistry courses. Um, then there's a three credit hour social sciences requirement, which is like the psychology, sociology courses. And then finally, the last requirement is college level math, uh, so college algebra. But if you come in with 90 credits and have completed all of that, you have 10 classes to complete your degree. And this is where it gets really fun and interesting for me. Students interested in our bachelor's program have two options. They can either do a no minor route or a minor route. And the difference is, is that any student transferring to Siena for any bachelor's degree program has to take three specific courses. And those three classes are LAS 301, LAS 401, and a philosophy or religious studies course. And LAS stands for liberal arts studies. Um, and the reason for that is Siena Heights University is a liberal arts institution. And the way that we can say that is by obviously offering those liberal arts courses. Um, so those three classes are specifically laid out regardless of what you transfer in. Now the other seven classes are going to be 300, 400 level electives that you could take whatever you would like, okay? Um, so they could be a 300 level finance course or a 400 level professional communication course. It does not matter so long as it's at that junior, senior level, okay? Um, and if you completed that program with no minor, at the end of the program, the completion date, uh, your degree would be a bachelor's of applied science in neurodiagnostic technology. It's great. The other option is on the right side of the page, the healthcare management minor option. So what it does is instead of having those seven 300, 400 level electives that I had mentioned, it takes out those seven electives and puts them into the discipline that you're wanting the minor in. So as an example, if you were to do the healthcare management minor, which 97% of my students do, um, what it would do is instead of having those seven electives, you would have these courses listed on the right. Now, you might say there's only six, because I couldn't figure out how to snip it properly. But essentially, it would be five healthcare management courses, one management, and one business course. Um, and so at the completion of that program, your degree would be a Bachelor's of Applied Science in Neurodiagnostic Technology with a minor in healthcare management. And so that's, that's more popular for a variety of reasons. Um, but it, usually, it's for the students who are wanting to get into a management supervisory role wanting to have that on their degree, <clears throat> as well as um, you know, their, their bachelor's in neurodiagnostic technology to show that they actually could be a manager or supervise at some given you know, day or time. Um, a lot of the questions that I get from this is, does it change anything? And the answer is no. Whether you pursue a minor or not, it's not going to change that credit hour cost. It's not gonna cost you more to do this route than it is to do the non-minor route. Also, a uh, question that I get a lot is, does it change the number of classes? Um, so as you've seen from both examples that I had mentioned, no, you're gonna take 10 classes regardless, you have to take 10. Um, so it's your choice as to either, you know, if you want the seven electives or seven put towards a minor. Um, now on the left side, you'll see um, a healthcare management major degree. And I just threw this in there for People who might not want their bachelor's degree to show or to say neurodiagnostic technology because it does happen. Um, so we actually offer a, a major that I've seen students transition into quite a bit, uh, which is our Bachelor's of Applied Science and Healthcare Management major. Um, and this on the left is the list of courses that you would take. I'm not going to go over them um, because it seems fairly straightforward. 
Uh, but we do have options depending on what you want your degree to read, what you want it to look like, um, and how to tailor that towards you. So um, feel free uh, to, to screenshot this or to ask me later. This is a lot of information, I know. Um, so thank you guys for bearing with me so far. Um, all right. So this is a um, standard degree plan I had taken out um, the student's name. But this is what it looks like if you decide to start with us. Um, so I actually have the Zoom stuff at the top, so it blocks off a little bit of my view. But how you read this is anything on the left side of the document, of the top or bottom section, uh, those are completed things. So um, at the bottom left, you'll see all of the, the certifications that this student had and their credits elsewhere and how many credits that they came in. So uh, they actually had their REEGT certification and at least two years worth of work experience. So right off the gate, we were able to give them 45 credits without knowing anything else about them. They also had their CNM and CLTM, uh, which are an additional 12 credit hours per registry. And then they had their polysomnographic, which is a 30 credit hour uh, award, and they had taken 20 credits through the University of Michigan and transferred in a total of 99. Um, so this student had already taken two courses with us in the top left, our LES 301 and philosophy course. Uh, but then you'll see in the middle section, these are the remaining courses that they have left to take, and this student did that healthcare management minor that I was just talking about. Um, so you'll see that I actually have it listed out, and when um, I believe it was um, a lady. I, so when she was going to take her classes. So for summer one of 20, uh, she was going to take HCM 301. Summer two of 20, you know, you guys can uh, decipher my crazy lingo. But um, this is what a degree plan looks like. I want you to see the structure of it. I want you to see, um, you know, what it would look like if you did start with us and how your classes um, would look because some people like to see that on a document. Everything on the right side of the page, don't worry. That's stuff for me. That's how I audit myself up to make sure everything's completed so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but this is what a degree plan would look like. Um, and, and this is actually a student's degree. So um, let's go past that. So why Sienna? Uh, this is just a few things about us. It talks about the SCA, how we're rated. Um, online from the best online programs by U.S. News. Um, but I want to go back as you guys are reading this and talk about our program and how students qualify. There's two ways that students can qualify for our neurodiagnostic program. Actually, there's three. Uh, one, and the most straightforward, is completing an associate's degree in the field. So an associate's degree in neurodiagnostics, neurodiagnostic technology, however it's read, doesn't matter. Completing an associate's is one way to qualify for it. Second way is to have um, a registry, uh, usually evoked potential REEG uh, T and two years worth of work experience. I can get you into our bachelor's degree program by having either of those. Um, and then the third way is completing an accredited neurodiagnostic program, having the registries, you can also qualify that way. So the reason that I bring this up is because you'll notice that whether you chose the no minor option or the minor option, um, none of those classes were in neurodiagnostics. And there's a very simple reason for that. Being that students can complete this online, we obviously don't have the funding nor access to have labs all across the US in every state. Um, so students have to have education in the field before they come to me. That's how they qualify. Now, if you don't have any of those certifications or if you didn't complete an associate's degree, you can also start with us and sit for a registry later on um, and qualify that way. So knowing that our program usually takes about a year, you can do one semester with us, say, Logan, I plan on sitting for my evoked potential registry and February, can I still start? Absolutely but you do indeed have to complete that because we have to prove that a student has knowledge in this field specifically. Um, so those are the three ways that a student can qualify for the program. I can always answer more questions later. Uh, but this, like I said, this is just a few things as um, to those who are wondering why Sienna, what, what steps us apart, um, what makes us a little bit different. And so uh, I'll give you just a quick moment to read that and I actually have a short video. So. This video, um, I actually did one of these myself, uh, but it was during 
COVID, before in Michigan, uh, hair, hair cutters and hairdressers had came up. So I'm not showing you my video because I was sporting a mane. Um, so I have a generic video for you to watch that describes this maybe a little bit better than I can. Um, so you guys can really understand the three plus one model, how this works. So it's a short two minute video, I promise. Um, but let's get into it. We'll be with you in one moment. Logan, I'm not able to hear the video. I don't know if you can hear it on your end or if anybody else can hear it. What is that, Erica? Um, I'm not able to hear the video. I'm not sure if anybody else can hear it or if it's mm. playing on your end. Well, that makes it really awkward then. <laughs> you guys were just looking at me then. Um, well, I, the good thing it writes it on the page. Um, I don't know. Let me see, I'm, I'm also talking to our IT consultant to see if there's anything he needs to do on his end to play the video. Can you click, can you actually click that link? Is that what you did? Yes. You want me to re-click the link? Yeah, try it again. That's one thing he suggested is just to click the link. I saw it initially spin and then it just disappeared. So I'm not sure why it's not playing. That's fine. It's okay. The main thing is that um, <laughs> this, this girl talks about everything that I had discussed, maybe a little bit better, um, but she tries to highlight the three plus one, the difference between students transferring in uh, two versus two at a standard institution. Um, that's fine. We don't have to bring anybody else in. Um, but with that being said, this video that was a complete success, um, let's go to uh, the first step of your journey. So if you've liked what I've said, if you uh, feel confident, if you've decided now is the time for you to get your degree, and if you're interested, you can follow this link that I had put in the PowerPoint. It's just start.siennaheights.edu and then forward slash neurodiagnostic technology. You don't even have to have the forward slash landing. Uh, but what this is going to do is it's going to fill out an inquiry page that send, gets sent directly to me. And then what I do is I reach out to students um, immediately after, usually, um, either via phone call or email. And then I start gathering your information, so your transcripts, your uh, registries. And then we set up a phone appointment to discuss you specifically, to discuss how many credits you're going to transfer in, how many classes you would have to take, options like that. Um, now, the last thing that I want to mention before I go into questions is um, just going back to how we can work simultaneously together. If a student came in with 78 credits, for example, and they didn't have their evoked potential registry, um, one thing that we could do is instead of me telling the student, hey, the 12 additional credits you can either take through Siena, you can take at a different college, uh, we also have the ability to say, if you get your evoked potential, uh, certification, if that's something that you're interested in, that will also add 12 credit hours to your uh, profile. So um, just know that there's 
it's extremely flexible. I can't highlight that enough as far as um, ways that we can work with you to get you to where you want to go and, and to make everything make sense for you. Um, so with that being said, um, at this point, this has my information. This has my office when I'm, I'm allowed back there. Uh, but this is my email. Feel free to, um, to write this stuff down, reach out. As a quick note, if you were to fill out the inquiry form today, tomorrow, whenever, all of next week, um, my wife and I are actually going to be on vacation for our anniversary. Um, so I'm not going to be able to respond until at least October 5th, which is the Monday that I come back. So just know if you fill something out, I promise I'm not going to forget about you. I will reach out as soon as I can. Um, but does anybody have any questions for me? Logan, thank you so much for taking time to speak this morning. I know you have some um, obligations today. So thank you so much for taking your time, your personal time to do this. We do have one question so far in, with the attendees. Uh, the question is, do you take RST and CNCT for credits? Great question. So what I can tell you is um, going back to you guys having so many certifications that I can't even keep my eyes on it. Um, the answer is most likely yes, although off the top of my head, I don't know exactly how much those are worth. Um, but yeah, chances are absolutely. I would bet that we would. Um, so when, if it does come down to you're interested, whoever this may be, and you send in your documents to me, what I'll do is I will touch base with the director of advising and her and I will go over how many credits this should be worth. But chances are yes, absolutely. Okay, great. I don't see any other questions uh, typed in the chat box. We'll give it maybe just a few seconds. If nobody has any, then um, I think we can dismiss you. And I'm just taking a look at my text in the chat box. So give me a second. No worries. Okay. Um, yeah, I see no other questions in the chat box. So again, Logan, thank you so much for uh, talking to us about your programs. Very exciting stuff here for us fellow neurodiagnostic clinicians. Yes, thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. You guys have a great rest of your day. Sorry for, uh, for talking your ear off, but it should get better moving forward.